Today, my dear sewing friends, that's right, we're talking about seam allowances and this one particular 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance that might not be the best solution for your sewing needs. And here's why. You know, it's actually really interesting because 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, like a lot of you already know, is a very commonly found seam allowance in most of the commercial patterns, the patterns that are made for us, for people to sew clothing at home. Now, of course, seam allowance will always depend on what kind of garment you're making, what kind of fabric you're using, and what kind of finishing technique you're applying to your seams and all that jazz. So, of course, it really depends. But 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance is a pretty good standard that you will find in majority of the commercial sewing patterns, but I haven't used it in a while. So when I talk about seam allowances in my sewing and drafting tutorials, and I say that, well, I use either quarter of an inch or three eighths of an inch seam allowance, a lot of times that does leave people either curious or really confused. So today, let's talk about it. I have some samples here prepared for you so that way you can see what I'm talking about and let's discuss why I don't use five eighths of an inch seam allowance, why I do prefer for a quarter of an inch or a three eighths of an inch seam allowance, why I do think that it makes for neater, cleaner, more professional looking sewing, why it makes your sewing easier and faster to complete, and why overall, I just think it's a better solution, in my humble opinion. As always, I say it in almost every single video, there's more than one way how to go about this or that in sewing, so find what works for you. I'm just sharing with you what I have found my discoveries with hopes that it will help some of you as well. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. Since I know a lot of you will be asking what is a seam allowance, here's a little illustration for you. Basically, seam allowance is the area for the construction of the seam in your garment. So you have your fabric, your seam line, and your seam allowance is between the stitch and the cut edge of the fabric, like you see on this purple blouse. Now, seam allowances can also come in different widths. It all depends on what is the construction technique that you're using. And in fact, you can have different seam allowances on the same pattern. So for example, you can have quarter of an inch on the neckline for creating those really nice smooth curves. You can have three eighths of an inch on the armhole for a better sleeve fit. And you can also end up with five eighths of an inch on a side seam if you're inserting a zipper, for example, to match the zipper tape with. Now listen, I totally get you that working with smaller seam allowance might seem really, really scary because after all, you only have about a quarter of an inch or three eighths of an inch to work with depending on which seam allowance you go with. But I truly think that it makes for cleaner seam, neater and straighter stitch lines and faster sewing, which all together makes it a more pleasant and more enjoyable experience for you. And here's why. Let me turn on my sewing machine and I'll show you a few really curious things. So we all know that there's a guide right over here on both sides underneath your presser foot. But have you ever wondered if you take your project or your piece of fabric and you actually line up the edge of your fabric with the edge of your presser foot, what would be the width of that seam? So one of these times I actually did wonder about that and I tried it out and this is the foot, the traditional foot that came together with my sewing machine. So this was already with the sewing machine as it was bought years and years ago. So when you sew like this, it's actually really neat and really easy because all you're doing, you're aligning the edge of your presser foot with the edge of the fabric. And if you have cut your fabric really neatly, this is a no-fail option. Your seam is going to be super straight and super neat. Alrighty, so my seam is done. It looks like this. So now let's go ahead and grab a ruler and measure it. And it actually gives me just a tad bit less than three eighths of an inch of the width of the seam. And this is perfect. I absolutely love doing that and using the edge of my presser foot as the guide for my seam. Once you put your presser foot down and it actually covers the edge of the fabric, it gives you more control it's easier to follow, it's easier to create a really nice clean seam and overall I do think that sewing goes so much faster because after that once you're done you don't have to trim your seam allowances, you don't have to do anything else, you already have the perfect width that you need. 
There is also a quarter of an inch presser foot, which is pretty popular among quilters, I believe. And I love using this as well. This one was bought additionally, so it did not come together with my sewing machine, but this one is a really useful tool to have to create those really beautiful quarter of an inch seams. Now here's a little sample where you can see the quarter of an inch, three eighths of an inch, and five eighths of an inch seam width. And you see the difference, right? The difference is definitely there. So I prefer for certain finishes, quarter of an inch, and for certain finishes, three eighths of an inch. Now, yes, there still are some instances where I'm going to be using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, but it really all depends on the type of the technique that I'm using and the type of the garment that I'm sewing. That being said, a very important point here, if you're using a commercial sewing pattern that already has seam allowances included in the pattern, you will need to trim down seam allowances on the pattern, so that way when you're stitching with a smaller seam allowances than what the pattern initially had, you don't end up with a garment that is going to be too big because think about it if the seam allowances are 5 eighths of an inch and you don't adjust them and you stitch with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance your garment is going to end up being way too big for you Another interesting observation that if you look at how the ready-to-wear clothing is constructed, you will oftentimes find 3 eighths of an inch or a quarter of an inch wide seam allowances now that we have sorted that out, let's take a look at the search steam right over here and a few interesting discoveries here as well. Now, working with knits is quite interesting for a few reasons. Number one, majority of the knits do not unravel, therefore it's a little bit easier to work with them in terms of finishing the actual seam. And number two, if you're working with a serger, and you can see that in this ready-to-wear garment as well, the serger performs double duty. It not only connects two pieces of the fabric, so that way they would create a garment, but it also finishes the seam. Therefore, the seam allowance is enclosed with that surged edge, and it usually is about quarter of an inch. So there really is no reason for you to cut 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance just to cut away the excess by forming a quarter of an inch seam with your serger. And when I sew with woven fabrics, I like to stick to 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance for the seams because then I know that the surged edge will take quarter of an inch. And then when I do 3 eighths of an inch, it gives me that perfect space between the surged edge and the actual seam of the garment. Not to mention that sewing with seam allowances that match the width of your actual seam on a serger or let's say the presser foot on your sewing machine makes for faster sewing. You know, a lot of times I think we associate efficiency with lack of quality, but I do think that in a lot of times it's actually a very false assumption. Just because you sew fast doesn't mean that you lack quality. I, for example, work pretty fast, yet my garments are pretty well made. So I do think that if this technique of using quarter of an inch or three eighths of an inch seam allowance makes for an easier, faster assembly of your garments, then there's really nothing wrong with adapting some of the practices from garment industry or fashion industry into your home sewing as well. Besides, if you're sitting in a ready-to-wear shirt or blouse, go ahead, turn them wrong side out, take a little measuring tape, and see what kind of seam allowances are done there. Now, here's the next question. How often do you struggle when you're sewing curves, especially when fabric puckers a little bit, when it's difficult to ease one curve into another curve? How often does that happen? Now, when you're using smaller seam allowances, yes, it is a lot easier to sew, and here's why. Now, this is actually one of the samples from one of the recent videos where we were talking about different types of hems and how to finish the bottom of your garments. And this was a faced hem, so hem that is done by creating a facing. Now, we use facings in a lot of other situations as well, for example, like necklines and armholes, and that is a very useful technique. Now, here, this seam allowance right over here is quarter of an inch and I would love for you to take a look how neatly it has pressed. Look at that. There's no puckering. There's no need to notch the seam allowance so that way it would lay nice and neat. It is perfect and it was so easy to sew it as well.
So when you're using quarter of an inch seam allowance on curves like this, on collars, on necklines, on facings, on other parts of the garments that don't necessarily go under a lot of stress, but you do have these curves that need to be done really neatly for your garment to look extremely beautiful and extremely well done, then quarter of an inch seam allowance definitely saves the day. Smaller seam allowance is also extremely useful when you're trying to put in sleeves, like for example, in this ready-to-wear blouse. You can see that here, it also features 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Usually, I don't use quarter of an inch seam allowance on the sleeves just because I do find it a little bit too small to work with, but 3 eighths of an inch works really well. And here's another reason. I personally just don't like bulk. I really don't like to have wide seam allowances. I don't know, maybe it's just the matter of habit or matter of preference, but I really don't. So I do what I like the most, which is quarter of an inch or three eighths of an inch seam allowance. So to sum up and to make it really visual, here are some examples. These are just some, not all, but I use quarter of an inch seam allowance usually for collars, cuffs, curved seams, like for example, necklines and armholes, sheer fabrics when working with knits, and for small details that are meant to be turned out, for example, when I'm sewing stuffed animals. 3 8 of an inch seam allowance I use for most of the seams in any given garment. So pretty much a standard for me. And quarter of an inch or 5 8 of an inch or any other wider seam allowance I usually use for seams under a lot of wearing stress. If I'm not sure about the fit and I'm not making a test garment, to match the zipper tape for a particular finish of the seam and when fabrics unravels too much, like for example boucle or tweed. So I think the best way before we jump to conclusions is to really try it out because if you won't try, you will never know whether it's for you, whether it's not for you, whether it makes it easier for you or you're just like, ah, no, 5 8 of inch seam allowance all the way through. So go ahead, grab a little scrap of fabric, try it on your sewing machine and see what kind of result it can do for you. If it works, great. If it doesn't, what did you lose? A little scrap of fabric, right? Alrighty, well, my dear sewing friends, by the way, tutorial on this camisole with a bus start is coming your way really, really soon, so definitely tune in for that. And until next time, happy sewing, create beautiful things for yourself, and I truly hope that this was useful. I will see you in the next video really, really soon. Bye!